Check out this interactive product catalog and the transitions as I move between not just the products, but the URLs. I'm actually navigating around the site and you're getting this seamless effect. Would you even know that you're on a web page? How cool is that? Just a year ago, building out an experience like this with this kind of interactivity would have been incredibly time consuming and complex. But we have two new tools in our web development toolkit that make it a whole lot easier. We've got view transitions that we're gonna use with Astro and we've got container queries. And when combined, wow, the results are incredible. And of course, some pretty cool images too. And they are provided by today's sponsor and that's Cloudinary who are not only hosting these interesting product images, but also doing the cool generative AI fill behind them. So I'm gonna give you all of the code, which is available to you for free in GitHub and walk you through exactly how to build this application. Let's get right into it. Let's start off in the terminal and we'll build our Astro app. We'll call the app Astro Container Queries. And we'll just start off empty. So we will use TypeScript, but we'll make it really relaxed. Let's jump into the code. Now, the first thing I want to do is install Tailwind. We're going to use Tailwind for all of the styling in this project. So we'll have it add Tailwind and integrate that into our Astro setup. Tailwind doesn't support container queries out of the box. They've actually got a first party plugin for that. So let's go check that out. So the first thing we need to do is install this Tailwind plugin. Then once you have that installed, then any div you put at container on is going to act as a container for a container query. That means that any subcomponent can then say, well, if that container is small, then lay me out this way. If that container is large, then lay me out this way. You're gonna see the effects of this. It's really cool. Let's go and install this plugin. So we'll bring in that plugin and then add it to our Tailwind config, and away we go. So this is our initial page. Now, ideally, we wanna have the same layout on every page. So what we're gonna do is we create a new directory called components, and then within that, a file named layout.astro. Now, this is just what we had before, except that we are bringing in a title optionally. We're also bringing in a little Tailwind that defines the size of the page, as well as turns the background black. So let's bring that into our index. and then put in hello world. Now we'll launch our server and that comes up on port 4321. And we've got our hello world. So it looks like we're good to go. So if you look back at the original example, we can see we have a bunch of cards. Now let's call those responsive cards because they're going to change your shape based on the container that you put them into. So let's go create that responsive card.astro file. So a responsive card is gonna have two different looks depending on the size of the container that it's placed within. And one is going to be a small form factor where the image is on the top and then the contents of the card are on the bottom. And then in a wide form factor, you're going to have the card image on the left and the card contents on the right. Now you can see this happening on line four, we have a Flexbox layout div. By default, we have a column-based layout. So every item in that div is going to be layered on top of each other where when we go into the large form factor or when we're in a large container, we're gonna to switch to column-based format. So that's gonna make it go side by side. It's super easy. If you're doing responsive layout in Tailwind already, it's really just adding at to all of the responsive primitives. So we're gonna add some props to our Astro component. We're gonna have source, that's the source of the image, alt, the alt text, and active, which is gonna say whether it's active or not. And then all the children are just gonna go into the slot. So let's bring in our responsive card. And then we'll use it to display a dog jacket. And we're going to constrain the size of that card by using the max width small. And we're going to find the container as the containing div. Let's hit save. And now we can see that because we're in a small container, the card has laid itself out vertically where the image goes on top and then the text down below. Now add a couple more cards, one at the large size and then one at the full size. And I'll show you how it lays out differently based on the container size. So now we have three different cards laid out in three different containers of different sizes, but the card itself decides how to lay itself out optimally within that container. The top card, because it's in a small form factor, has the image on top and the text on the bottom. The other two lay them out side by side because they've got more room to work with. 
Now let's put some cool images into our cards. And that means going to today's sponsor, and that's Cloudinary, who are hosting our images. So I'm going to log into Cloudinary. I'm going to use my GitHub account to do that. And then I'll go over to my media library. Now I've uploaded a whole bunch of images that I have created on mid-journey of different products, and I put them all on a white background. And if you'll notice, earlier on the video, I showed cool backgrounds in that. Well, we'll get there. That's part of the generative fill process that we're going to use Cloudinary for. But look at this really great way that they're structuring all of our images. And now let's say that I want to go and actually get this dog jacket. Well, I can go over here and actually just get the URL and just drop it in there. I'll put in the URL, hit save, and there you go. It's that easy to use these Cloudinary images. But I do want to do a better integration with Cloudinary because I want to show off more of their really cool feature set, even on the free account that I'm using right here. So that starts with setting up our cloud name. So I'm going to create a .env file and put in there my cloud name. My cloud name is Nike Jack. I did work at Nike for a little bit. Now I haven't worked at Nike for a while, and I can't speak for them, but we did choose Cloudinary while I was at Nike, and I was very pleased with it, and many others were as well. Next thing we're going to want to do is bring in the URL gen library. This is a Cloudinary library that generates the URLs for a given image. And I'm going to create a cloud image aster component. First thing I'm going to do is initialize the Cloudinary library to make sure that it's on the right cloud using that environment variable that we just created. Then we're going to find some basic properties for the component, like the source, the width, the height, class names, what have you. And then we're going to build a URL for our image. We're going to ask Cloudinary, hey, go construct the URL that we're going to put on the image tag. Now you can see this library uses this really cool chaining format to give you the ability to go and add on as many effects as you want. In this case, all we're going to want to do is just set the width and the height and add some padding. Let's go bring in that pad. Now you can just take the output of that URL and put it into an image tag. We'll bring in the cloud image component. And I'll take the source and the alt and the active and pass that off to our cloud image. Let's have a look. All right, pretty cool. Now you can see actually that we've done a little bit of CSS already by adding some rounding to the top of the image. Let's go take a look at how we did that. So all I did was add the rounding tailwind class name. But here's the trick, right? So we actually want two different styles of images. So we might want a larger image when we are in the larger form factor and a smaller image when we're in the smaller form factor. So let's actually use CLD image twice. We'll have one image that's only visible in the small form factor, and then we'll have another image that's only visible in the large form factor. And the large form factor will give it more width and height to give it better resolution. But I want it to blend in a little better, so let's actually use a background replacement from Cloudinary to give these images a better background. So I'll bring in background removal, and all we need to do is add this AI-based background image removal by just adding an effect. And then I can take this newly transparent alpha image that has no background, and just set the background to whatever color I want. Is it save and see how we go? <laughs> My God, that's cool. So I think we now have everything we need to start building out our application. So let's go and go back into our code. So we need a database of all our images. Let's go create a new file called products. That'll just export an array of all of the products, including our favorite dog jacket. Now let's go back into our home page and bring in that list of products, and then we'll place our existing cards with a map of all of the cards. So let's have a look. Now check this out. It's actually responsive. So it's two column layout here and a four column layout there. Well, how's that done? We actually have two levels of container query going on here. We've got the overall grid, which is in itself a container that contains all of the cards. And then each card is in itself a container and adjusts to the right size of that container. We can see that here as the outer div is marked as a container. And then the inner dev itself is marked as a container, but it also has responsive sizing that respond to the outer container. But now we also want to be able to navigate around. So we put an anchor tag on each one of the products, and they're going to go initially to top nav. So we're going to have a line of products at the top, and then whichever you selected at the bottom. So let's go create a new route for the top nav. 
And then within that folder, we're going to create another folder named ID. That's going to have the ID of the product like dog jacket. And then within that, we're going to put our index.astro file. And this astro file is going to bring in that layout as well as the product. So it's going to bring in the ID from the parameters. That's, that bracket ID is going to become params ID. And then it's going to give astro a list of the static paths. So that's all of the products that are going to be shown. So remember, astro is a SSG framework. So it's going to do static site generation. It's going to generate all the pages. So you got to give it that list of static paths, much like you would with Next.js. So you do that using get static paths. And then finally, we'll just put a little bit of a layout in there just to start. And let's have a look. OK, there we go. So we can go back. There we go. Cool. So what we want here is a product grid. We have the top level unselected products at the top, and then the selected product in the middle as the hero. So let's go build out that product grid. So we'll create another component called product grid. And into there, we'll bring our responsive card as well as our list of products. And we're going to get as props the selected ID that's going to come in from the parent page, as well as whether you want the nav on the side, giving you a left-hand nav, or the top, which will give you a top nav. And then the page prefix we're going to use to put on any anchor tags that we put in here. But let's go take a look at how this is all going to lay out before we take a deeper look at the HTML. So we'll bring in our product grid. And then we'll tell that product grid what the selected ID of the product is, as well as what page we're on. So when we click around, we'll go back to the right page. So let's hit Save. Oh, nice. OK. So as we click around, we're going to the right spots. That's awesome. So what's really happening here? Well, you have got a flex container that has the two major pieces. It's got a product list, which is either on the top or on the side. And then it's got the highlighted product. Now, that product list is in itself a container. And that's why we get awesome responsive effects like this. It drops to one column. And then you've got the selected product as the next div in the flex box. OK, but remember back to the original, we actually did a lot of cool movement. And so that's what I want to try next. I want to bring in view transitions from Astro and give us that really nice movement effect as we move between the different routes. So the first thing I need to do is go over to our layout, bring in view transitions, and then, and then put the view transitions component into the head. All right, so this is pretty cool. We're getting interesting kind of fade in, fade out effect, which is elegant. But we want it to move more, right? So the first thing we need to do is hint to the view transition system what the actual divs are so that it knows where they're moving in the layout. To do that, we want to add view transition names to all of our products. For example, I want to add the view transition name to each product using just products dash and then the ID. And then that maps over to the product grid here, where we want to do the same thing with each of these divs. So now I've got all the divs named so that the view transition system can track them as the pages change. Oh, this is starting to look really, really cool. But I want to tweak the timing a little bit. So I'm going to bring in another library that you really should know about. And this library is called Open Props. Open Props gives you a bunch of really handy CSS environment variables that you can use for things like animations. You can scale in, scale out, fade in, fade out. So let's go bring them into our layout. And then we can bring in those Open Props and use those variables to change how our view transitions work and how long they take. Let's hit Save and give it a try. OK, that's looking awesome. Now, to make this even cooler, let's support left-hand navigation. All we need to do is create another directory, left nav, and again within that ID. And we'll take that astro file that we had here, pop it in there, change it to left nav, and say that we want the nav on the side. Now it's allowed to switch back to top nav. Awesome. OK, let's go to top left. Wow, that is super cool. So now we saw in the beginning that we had some really cool generative fills behind our products. So how hard is it to do that? Not hard at all. Let's go over to our code. We'll go into CLD image. We'll bring in generative fill. We'll take out our existing background. And then we'll add a background 
with that generative fill. It's that easy. And there it is. Wow. In fact, actually, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's actually go and make the inactive images sepia toned. So we'll bring in the sepia effect. And then we'll just add that effect and say, well, if we're active, then don't do anything. Otherwise, let's use sepia. And let's hit save. <laughs> and now anything that is inactive is given that beautiful sepia hue. All right, I hope you enjoyed that and that you try it out for yourself. You download the code and see, can you do a better job on the animations? Can you use those view transitions better? Can you get more out of the Cloudinary AI? It is awesome stuff. And thank you so much again to Cloudinary for all of your support for this video. And of course, if you like this video, you can support it by clicking on that like button. You can also hit the subscribe button and click on that bell if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I'm the Blue Collar Coder.